Welcome to the Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a shag with bangs, something that's going to be solid and really full, kind of uh, 60s, 70s inspired, that, that Stevie Nicks, Bridget Bardot kind of look. So let's get started. So we're going to start in the center. We're going to take a flat section right at the front of the hairline, and then we're going to take that all the way back to the nape. Same thing on both sides, so I have a nice mohawk section going from the front hairline all the way to the back, as you see here. I'll take my first section around the front hairline, hold that up and determine how short I want my shortest layering to be, and then using my feather styling razor, I'll go through and cut my length off. I'm cutting it shorter around the front and longer as I go towards the back. Now, one thing I want to tell you about the Feather Styling Razor is I'm using the Type R blade. The Type R blade covers less of the razor and exposes more of the blade, so it's actually easier to cut. The standard blade actually covers more of the blade, so it gives you more protection, but it's not going to allow you to cut as thick a section of hair as the Type R blade. So continuing working my layering from short at the front, longer in the back, I'm going to go through and hold each section of my mohawk section at 90 degrees until I reach the crown. After the drop crown, I'll pull everything up to that section. So that's going to give me an increase of length as I go down towards the nape. Checking out my layering, making sure everything looks even and smooth. Now we're going to continue a parallel section to my first mohawk section, and then I'm going to comb it into the center. So I'm not going to walk my guide from the middle of the head towards the perimeter. I'm pulling all the hair into the center. So what this is going to do is it not only is it going to be shorter in the front, it's also going to be shorter in the center of the head and longer as it works towards the ears and longer as it works towards the nape in the back. So I'll continue to hold everything up at 90 degrees from the head into the center of the head following my previously cut guide. And an important thing when you're cutting with the razor is I want to make sure I maintain an even broad razor stroke. If I use a broad razor stroke, it's going to keep all my ends very nice and light and airy. If I take a real tight stroke where I don't take it uh, uh, and move the razor a lot, I'm going to end up with a more solid shape. So I'm using a soft, broad stroke here. Follow us on your favorite social media at Jatai Feather. Now I'm continuing to work my layering going towards the back, following the exact same guide that I was using before. Now we'll continue on. I'm going to take a parallel section, and sometimes this section can be a little difficult to take because you're working a curved section on a flat part of the head, which is the side. Pulling everything, again, directly into the center of my head. So that first mohawk section that I held, everything in this haircut, as far as the layering goes, is being held up in that mohawk section. Holding everything up, the same broad razor stroke that I was taking, and just follow through. If you approach something very, very methodical, it becomes easier to follow through on the pattern and you can move very, very quickly. Once you get the hang of using a razor, you can move through this very, very quickly and get the length and the texture you want at the same time. Now we're going to take our last section here on this side of the head, comb everything up. Anything that hangs over, I'll cut off, as you can see right there. And as I work towards the back, I'm going to pivot around the ear. There we go, right through there, and continue to work from front to back. There's our line. Now, as we get to the back, we're not going to have a whole lot of hair to cut off. So this last section here that we're going to work on, there's not going to be a whole lot of hair. So I've been cutting on the inside of my fingers the whole time, but there's not a lot there. So I'm just going to glide the razor across the outside of my finger and cut any of those long little pieces off that hang over. Now we're going to go back and take my original mohawk section and the first section on the left side of the head, finish the same thing on the other side, and now we have our layering done. And I think it looks pretty nice and even all over. So now we're going to section out around the front because I feel like the layering on top is too heavy. So we're going to take some Jatai Blade Glide, 
spray that vigorously across the entire section of the hair that we're about to cut because the blade glide makes the razor slide across the hair much more smoothly and evenly and gives me a much cleaner cut without the razor trying to snag any hair. Now we're going to go through and channel some weight out of each section of hair that we started with in the beginning. So we're going to channel it out. Where it's thinner, we're not going to take a whole lot. Where it's thicker, you're going to see me take more hair out. Because I felt like this mannequin head, it was thicker on the top and thinner underneath, which most of these are. And sometimes you have clients that are like that as well. Or thicker in one area of the head, maybe in the nape, less in the front. So I'm going to apply my channel texturizing exactly where it needs to be applied. So I'm really paying attention to how much hair I take out with each section. It's not just some haphazardly, just willy-nilly throw the razor through the hair. I want to apply it with forethought and with technique so I can make sure that the shape flows exactly like I want. After I got the first section done, I'm going to go through and continue working all the way towards the back. So each section, I'll take out as much hair as need as need be so that I get a nice even amount of weight distributed all the way across the top. Give us a thumbs up, click subscribe, and the notification bell to be notified of future Jatai Academy content. Now we're continuing on. Now you'll see right there that piece of hair did not have a whole lot of weight in it, so I just completely removed it. Thin out the hair on top of it, texturize it so I have a nice even amount of weight distribution. Cut anything that hangs over around the front off that I don't like. Now here's my last section right in the nape, and I'm going to use the exact same methodology I was using around the front, removing as much hair as I feel is needed. After we do that, we've got everything smooth. Now let's section out our bang section. Let's section out our bang. We're going to take that triangle right in the front, and I'm going to cut it in half. Now after I've cut it in half, I'm going to take my center section right there in front of her eyes, and I want to cut this longer than I think it needs to be. And I'm going to take a broad razor stroke and cut that off, and then look at it and see where it's hitting, seeing how it's flowing. And now I'm going to cut everything evenly across the front. So I'm not building up any length towards the edges. I want everything evenly across the front. So that way I have a little bit of bang that hangs underneath. I'll cut it a little shorter in the middle, but I don't want to cut an angle into it. I want the texturizing to be what allows me to push the hair out of the eyes. So on this section, I'm not cutting an angle into it. I may cut it a little shorter right on the nose, but I wanna keep that fairly even across and the texture was what's gonna give me movement to it. Now, as I finish this, I get this even on both sides. I like that straight across, no problem. Now this section, I am gonna cut shorter in the middle longer towards the edges. So I have that hair underneath that's gonna be disconnected from this section right here. You see how it's getting longer towards the edges. So that underneath hair allows the longer hair to be pushed up out of the way and gives me an illusion of the hair being longer than it really is. Because I have that top layer that's a little longer and the underneath layer keeps it out of the eyes so it has that that movement to it without me having to curtain the entire front. So it's, it's, a, it's a schizophrenic bang. Underneath is hanging straight and the top is hanging over to the side. And then I'll just fine tune it to where I get everything exactly like I want. I like it. I think the bangs look really good. I think we really hit the bangs perfectly today. And we got a lot of layering throughout the whole shape, which I think is important for this type of shag but still not overly stringy or overly wispy. It still has a solid shape. And I think that that works well, especially when you wanna get some fullness and some height on the top and have a heavy bang. I think if it's not full all around in a solid shape with a heavy bang, it doesn't really fit. But that's just my personal opinion. And she's ready to go to a Hollywood bungalow. She looks good, she's ready to go. Check out the Thai Academy. There's all kinds of great information on there that will make you a better hairstylist and barber. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.